Today I want to discuss CPTSD and its relation to having been abused particularly by a narcissistic partner. Unfortunately, this is something I have way too much experience with. The end of my relationship with a narcissist in 2016 caused me to try to take my life and landed me in the hospital for a week and subsequently in a psychiatric ward overnight looking at my neighborhood through a window that had bars on it. All of my connection with the outside world, aside from those on my floor, were cut off. Looking back, it was a very enlightening and much needed break from the world. I am not condoning suicide. Let me be very clear about that. But what happened to me forced me to shut off the noise and truly reflect on what had happened, not just over the past couple of years, but my entire life. I had been living with CPTSD all my life and didn't know it. My whole life had been about flight or fight as a result of being raised by a narcissistic mother and having several abusive partners. The last one from 2014 to 2016 is what finally woke me up and made me realize what I had done to myself. I do know that I am not responsible for the abusive behaviors of my past partners or my mother. What I do take responsibility for are my choices to ignore red flags, all in the hopes of finding love the hopes of being accepted just for myself. Because of CPTSD, I spent my entire life trying to conform into something that the world thought I should be. What I am going to discuss will only skim the surface. Likely, if you have suffered similar trauma in your life, you will recognize the behaviors described in this video. Feel free to share your own stories in the comment section if you like. A narcissistic individual can't show or feel genuine love. Everything that they say to you, everything that they give you, everything that they do to you is motivated by their own wants and needs. I'm going to repeat that. A narcissistic individual cannot show or feel genuine love. They can only mimic it. Everything that they say to you Everything that they give you, everything that they do to you, is motivated by their own wants and needs. Take that in for a moment. It's pretty scary, isn't it? There is no real concern for your welfare beyond how it benefits them. There is no empathy or feelings of genuine affection. Even the sex is purely motivated by their own needs. Speaking of sex, a narcissist does not care what gender you are, and they are not faithful. Survivors of abuse develop CPTSD and can become socially withdrawn and self-isolated. Their trust is broken. Their ability to trust even their own judgment is broken. Having been abused by a narcissist changes your brain. You might be surprised to hear this. One of the things I learned as a child care provider is how trauma literally changes the brain development in a child. It quite literally reroutes the signals and changes who they're going to grow up to be. It's why, if I have a difficult child, I ask the question, not what is wrong with this child, instead, what has happened or is happening in this child's life? The same thing happens to adults going through abuse. It literally changes your brain. You, in all likelihood, go on high alert. Anything associated with the memories of the abuse can trigger an anxiety attack. Your brain develops the fight-or-flight mode, constantly waiting for something to go wrong, the other shoe to drop. You question everything and everyone, including yourself. 
Often a survivor is left with very strong feelings of anger, betrayal, shame, and sadness once they've realized that they've been the victim of a narcissist. Some may blame themselves. How did I not see it? If I saw it, why did I not leave? Why did I give them so many chances? What's wrong with me? What you must understand is that the narcissist is so cunning, so manipulative. Remember, they've been playing this game their entire lives. So even if you did know something was wrong, they had you so mixed up that you probably believed that somehow all of the confusion, all of the mixed signals, were because of some flaw in yourself. Nothing could be farther from the truth. The narcissist is a master of manipulation with one goal in mind and one only, to feed their own needs and wants. Who they hurt in the process is of no consequence to them. The reality of it is that the narcissist, for as cruel as they are, it all stems from a serious lack of their own self-esteem. And their own fear of abandonment. But that's for another video. This doesn't mean you should feel sorry for them. But it helps to understand their motivation and why they only care about themselves. Sometimes the one being abused, after realizing what's happened, might want to attempt to change their abuser or rescue them, but it can't be done. At most, a narcissist can become self-aware, as is the case with Sam Vankin, and I will link his YouTube channel below. Now, before you check him out, realize that he is not offering his advice and information in order to help you. He enjoys the attention and monetary gain from the popularity of his channel. It's very hard for me to watch him without becoming angry. <laughs> if you do watch him, keep in mind that he is a diagnosed narcissist twice. He believes only his view is the correct view and everyone else is wrong. In fact, I actually believe that he has become angry that the world is, is suddenly learning about narcissism and he wants you to believe that the things that you're hearing on the internet are incorrect and that only he is right. <laughs> but you will get some first-hand information from his channel. Just be careful that you watch, if you watch, with a discerning heart in mind. And don't let him get in your head. Recovering from narcissistic abuse takes time. How much time? Well, it's been six years for me. And while I have come a long way, I'm still recovering. And to be honest, I don't expect to ever be fully and completely rid of the effects the trauma of it all had on me. Just to get to where I am today has been and continues to take a lot of hard work. Work on myself work on my life, but it's worth it. It's so very worth it to regain your sense of self and to get your life back and to learn how to truly love and take care of yourself. I am still learning how to have healthy connections with others, and I am still trying to learn how to trust not just men, but people in general. I suppose it's partly why I continue to work from home. It's difficult. It's lonely but no one can hurt me either. My own narcissistic abuse, the trauma of it all, has definitely affected the way I see the world. But it's my goal, my mission, to try and help others avoid the quicksand that I fell into, and if they are in it, to try and throw them a rope to pull them out. But whenever I do start to get down or feel like I'm still struggling because of it all, I look back at where I was six years ago and how I was feeling then and realize just 
how much I've grown and how far I've come. And that gives me the courage and the strength to keep taking those baby steps forward and to keep going. So what do you do now? How do you heal? You set boundaries and you state them clearly. And you do not waver from them. You acknowledge and accept that the abuse happened. You prepare yourself to have very complex emotions. You reclaim your identity. Practice self-compassion. Be very good to yourself. Understand that your feelings may linger. Above all, take care of yourself. This area alone is such a huge subject that I'm going to cover it in more than one video because this is an area I feel very passionate about, warning others and helping others to recover from narcissistic abuse from a partner. I thank you for watching and look out for the next video in this series where I will talk about dating again after narcissistic abuse. Will you date again? How do you know if you're ready, if ever? <laughs> I'll see you next time. God bless.